I'm pleased to greet all of you who have gathered in Sao Paulo, Brazil for the Latin America Regional Dialogue of the Global Commission on HIV, AIDS and the Law. We are honored to welcome the Chair of the Commission, former President of Brazil, Fernando Enrique Cardoso. Obrigado, Presidente. His leadership has been crucial to the Global Commission's vision. We're also honored to have Commissioner Ana Elena Chacón Echeverria participating in the dialogue today. It is no coincidence that this Global Commission, HIV and the Law, is convening in regional dialogue in Brazil. Brazil is HIV's response has been recognized as a beacon of hope for many developing countries and its experience has been vital in shaping the global HIV response. Brazil's commitment to respecting human rights and addressing the underlying inequalities that fuel the epidemic has set their HIV prevention and treatment efforts apart from those of many countries and most importantly have led to tangible re reductions in infection rates. Special thanks goes to Michel Silibet, UNAIDS Executive Director, for his guidance and for the commitment of the joint program HIV and AIDS for the Global Commission's work. The HIV epidemic remains relatively stable in Latin America. There were an estimated 92,000 new HIV infections in 2009 and the total number of people living with HIV continued to grow from one 1.1 million in 2001 to an estimated 1.4 million in 2009, due largely to the availability of antiretroviral therapy, which enables people living with HIV to continue to live productive lives. Stigma and discrimination against people who use drugs, men who have sex with men, transgender people, sex workers and prisoners remains all too prevalent, contributing to the markedly increased burden of HIV in these populations. Women confront layers of stigma and discrimination on a daily basis in the domestic sphere, in the community and the healthcare settings which increase in their vulnerability to HIV and violations of human rights. 30 years since its discovery, HIV continues to thrive in context of inequality and violence and among those who our societies choose to exclude misunderstood and stigmatized. This is why addressing stigma and discrimination is essential for effective HIV responses in this region. The protection and empowerment of all populations vulnerable to HIV also contributes to broader health and development outcomes. The law can have a profound impact on the lives of people, especially those who are marginalized and disempowered. The law, its application and access to justice can also be powerful tools to challenge stigma, protect people from violence, promote public health, and protect human rights. There is much to learn from our diverse region about the interactions between law, legislative reform, law enforcement practices, access to justice, and public health responses. Some of these lessons are positive. They are examples of how leadership can transform problematic legal environments, such as those limiting the production of antiretroviral therapy, those of criminalizing certain populations on the basis of their sexual orientation, into environments that promote and protect the rights of those most vulnerable to HIV. Sadly, we can also see examples where it is clear that human rights violations are preventing progress in addressing HIV. This Commission's dialogue process is a unique opportunity to bring together communities and civil society on the front lines of the HIV response and law and policy makers. I am pleased that we are engaging diverse constituencies in this dialogue. Ministries of Justice, Ministries of Health and Parliamentarians, human rights institutions, civil society organizations working on harm reduction, women's issues, human rights and health. The aim is to create a space in which constructive solutions that put the power of the law to work for scaling up effective and sustainable HIV responses can be devised. Today, as you discuss the complex interactions between legal environments and HIV in this region, I hope you speak and listen with candor and courage. Your dialogue today will certainly deepen the Commissioner's understanding, providing invaluable insights for their policy and advocacy work. 
I look forward to hearing of the outcomes of this dialogue, which I am sure will have very important ramifications for HIV responses in Latin America. I wish all of you a constructive and fruitful dialogue.